By the end of this video, when we walk on inside our building, we'll be able to actually walk on inside and enter the interior, a whole new place in our map. Whoa, that's so cool. It's like we teleported. We can also go back outside, of course. Otherwise, that would be a very strange game. So now we have even more places to explore. But before we get into the video, I want to talk to you about something that you might want to explore, which is today's sponsor, Brilliant. Brilliant is an interactive learning platform built for people who love solving problems and learning by doing. So if you're into game development or just enjoy wrapping your head around systems and logic, you're probably gonna love it. They've got a ton of courses on logic, math, computer science, and even data and AI, all taught in a really hands-on and visual way. I especially recommend the programming with Python and thinking in code courses, since they really help you break down complex problems into smaller, manageable parts something we do in game dev all the time. They also have a mobile app, so you can keep learning while on the go. Really handy and really cool. If you want to try it out, Brilliant's giving you 30 days of free access to everything on their platform. Plus, if you're enjoying it, you get 20% off an annual subscription when you use the link brilliant.org slash gamecodelibrary. So I hope you check it out and enjoy. You can find the link down below. Thank you very much, Brilliant, for supporting the channel. But cool, let's get into some interiors. That was meant to be a joke on like into and inside and interiors. I don't know. Let's go. Cool, so first of all, let's draw out the interior of our building here. I'm gonna go to the Ninja Adventure Asset Pack, go inside Backgrounds, Tile Sets, and then Interior to grab some new tile sets to use in our game. I'm gonna drag in Tile Set Interior Floor and Tile Set Wall Simple. So I'll just drag those on into our Assets folder. Then I'll select both of these and drag them into our Tile Sets folder. You can hold down Shift and click on both of these to select them both at once, and we can set them up in the Inspector. So Sprite Mode will set to Multiple, Pixels per unit will make 16, filter mode to be point no filter, and compression to be none. Click apply, then individually we'll select these, go to sprite editor, click slice, grid by cell size, and go 16 by 16. Click slice, and then click apply. So now all our tiles are cut out into 16 by 16 pieces. Close this down and do it for the walls. So sprite editor, click slice, grid by cell size, 16 by 16, slice, and apply. Cool, now these are all sliced up. We're gonna to want to make a new palette for our interior. So let's go to Window, 2D, Tile Palette. This has popped out over in front of our assets. I'm just gonna drag that Tile Palette tab next to our inspector. And here you can see our original Houses one. I'm gonna click on this drop down where it says Houses and click Create New Palette. I'll name this Interior Crocodile Alligator. Click Create. And in our Tile Sets folder, I'm gonna right click and do a new folder, which I'll call Interior Palette. I'll double click on this and then click select folder. So now I'm gonna drag in from our assets that tile set wall into the palette, which then pops up our folder selection again. So then we can click interior palette, select folder, then our tiles will load in. Now we don't need a new palette for the flooring as well. We can scroll out on this tile palette. You can hold down your middle mouse button to drag this around as well and simply drag just below your flooring too. Select the interior palette folder again and now our flooring's loaded in. Cool, so now we're gonna want to paint our interior somewhere that we won't see on our main map. So I'm gonna scroll out on our scene view and since we can't exit down the bottom here, I'm gonna going to draw our interiors just below down here. We should never be able to see outside our camera bounds. You can draw yours out anywhere on your scene, but cool, I'm gonna pick this little square here and then make sure we select our correct layers. So for the ground, let's draw out our floor first. A cool thing you can do with patterns like this is drag and select the whole thing. And with the paintbrush tool selected, you can just paste that straight onto your grid. And I'll add a little section down the bottom here for our doorway. So our player will be able to walk through this bit. Otherwise, all the walls are gonna be on our collision layer. So make sure you select your collision layer at the top and then we can draw out our walls. This palette also comes with a little window. So we could switch to our decor layer and paint some windows on top of our walls. You can rotate your tiles by pressing the square brackets. So we could rotate this and even have windows on the side of our walls. Cool, you can of course decorate this as much as you want. Whatever you wanna do here is of course up to you. But cool, I'll click back on our inspector so we can continue setting up our room. So of course our current areas have boundaries on them. Under my map bounds, you can see we've got T1 and F1. They each have polygon colliders, mapping out the space of our camera boundary and a space that our player cannot leave. Unless of course he goes for a waypoint. Each one of these also have waypoints inside them. In our town, T1, we have a waypoint going up to the forest, which is my F1 waypoint since this points to forest number one. And in our forest, we have a T1 waypoint, which points back down into our town. So inside our map bounds, let's create a new game object, which of course you can name what you like. You can say, yep, this is in town number one since it's this shop, and then go underscore I1 to say 
interior one, B1 for building one, or you could simply just go B1, this is building number one. Whatever makes most sense in your mind. I think I'll go for T1, B1. Although we can't see this game object, it is in our scene. In our inspector at the top, you can select a little icon so you can see where this is in our game. And you can see that doesn't appear, it won't appear until you click this little ball with the dots on it. It toggles the view of our gizmos. So I'm gonna drag my orange little diamond down to the middle of our interior so we can set up this game object. So like we know, we're gonna need a polygon collider 2D. I'll open up the points and set the size to be four. Since we want this to be a square, then click Edit Collider and drag these points out to fit around our building's interior. Cool, now the next bit we need is to create a waypoint for both entering the building, so the one in the town, and exiting the building, so one inside our shop, so we can leave the shop and get back outside. We'll go back to our town for now. I'll turn off gizmos for a bit. And we can add another waypoint under our T1. So let's go create empty T1 underscore B1 underscore waypoint. And I'll drag this over to be close to our door. We're going to want to add a component to be a box collider 2D, which we can click the edit collider button and line this up for where you want it to be. So when our player hits their head on this, they'll enter the building. And we're also going to want to tick this to be is trigger. The next thing we want, as we can see on our F1 waypoint, is our map transition script. So if we go to T1, B1 waypoint, click add component and search for our map transition script. We can add this on and we can see we need a map boundary. So we can drag in our T1, B1, since that's where we want to go to. And for direction, hmm, we don't really have something that'll move us to somewhere completely across the map. So we're gonna need to go into our map transition script. Let's double click on this. So at the top, as well as knowing the direction, we're also going to want to know what point in our map we want to move to, since we're basically teleporting across the map. I'm going to duplicate this line for our direction, change direction to be transform, and change its name to be teleport target position. So we can pass in a little transform game object that'll tell us where we want to teleport to. Next in our direction enum, at the end I'm going to go comma, teleport. So we can see in this script, there is a function called update player position. Normally we use a switch statement and add or minus from our current position in the direction we want to move, depending on where our waypoint was. Instead, at the very top, we want to say if our direction equals direction dot teleport, then our player dot transform dot position will now equal our teleport target position dot position. And if we are teleporting, we can then just return out. And guess what? That's all we need in this script. So let's go back to Unity and on our T1B1 waypoint, let's set our direction to be teleport. And now we want to set a transform for this teleport to point to. So let's scroll back out to our interior. And on my T1B1 waypoint, I'm gonna right click on this, create an empty game object and call it our teleport point. Let's turn on our gizmos and pick a nice little green diamond, sure. If I zoom out, this is over by our waypoint. We wanna say where it wants to teleport to, which is in our interior. So when our player teleports to here, where do you want them to go? I'll set it just in front of the front door so we don't collide and exit again. We want to be just inside. Cool, so if we click on this waypoint, we can now drag in this teleport point into this transform slot. Now we need to do the same for exiting the shop. So if you like, you can copy this T1B1 waypoint, paste it and drag it under our T1B1 game object. Of course, this is positioned up in our building, so let's drag this waypoint down as this is the one we want to exit. I'll rename this to T1 waypoint since we're exiting to T1. Edit the box collider so it fills this doorway. We want to teleport and then we want to set our teleport point. You can double click on this if you've lost it in your scene. Mine's gone way down. And we can drag this now to be outside our building. So let's zoom on in. This green diamond is where we'll appear when we exit the building. I'll do it just down in this little square. Cool, and I just want to make sure that is pointing to the right teleport point. So I'll drag the teleport point from our waypoint into this transform slot. Very nice. Oh, and I've just noticed as I've clicked on this T1B1 that we set up our polygon collider 2D is not set to its trigger. We need to make sure we tick this is trigger box so we can walk around inside this collider. Otherwise, we're going to bump our head on it and we won't be able to move. So cool, now this is all set up. Let's press play. Walk on over to our building. Walk inside. Okay, when I first entered, you may have seen me moving bumpy around there and I quickly panicked. What was happening was our camera was bumping on the edges of our collider since it was so tight 
and messing up. So for your interiors, you can make your polygon colliders much bigger since this is the space we want our camera to be able to move around in. If I play while focused, you can see our camera now has space to move around and slide smoothly. Very nice. You can see our background is also blue, while the edges of our interior are black. This is the background color of our main camera. So if you change this, you can see it changes the background. Make sure you unplay. When you change this, I'm going to use the little eyedropper on the side and select that dark gray color that's on the outside of our interior walls so that when we press play and walk over to our building, walk on inside, our background is now matching. Our camera is smoothly sliding around. And if we walk outside, oh, it breaks. Whoops, we missed something. On our T1 waypoint, we copied and pasted this and we didn't change our map boundary. So we we're still pointing to go to the interior. This waypoint wants to point and set us back to our town. So we need this map boundary to be T1, since that's what we're trying to teleport to. Whoopsie daisy. Let's press play again. Go inside our building. Hooray, nice and smooth, nice background. Very cool, colliding with things. I can walk behind here, cute. Then walk outside. And we're outside our building. Hooray, how exciting. We now have interiors. Now you may think when we enter and exit a building, it's a bit wobbly. You know, the camera goes a bit weird, like woo, as it's processing the movement to move from one boundary to the other. It'll be kind of cool to add a little transition while our scene sets itself up, like a little fade to black. Hmm, I wonder what we'll do in the next video. In the next video, which I'll show you in my little test project where my frog moves much slower, when we enter a building, we'll fade to black and then exit fading again. So you get this nice seamless transition instead of seeing the weird movement of the camera. No more spoilers. Be sure to like and subscribe so you don't miss out. To catch up on the scripts and get every piece of code I've ever written for this channel, you can join our Patreon or you can grab this whole template set up for you with all finished features and all future updates. So check it out. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next one. Bye.